The mark of the beast is indulging in an unforgivable sin. Revelations 14 verses 9 to 10 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worships the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Lamb. Evelyn, one of the NFTs is about to defect. Inform them immediately that they are not to leave. They must receive the mark of the beast or face consequences. Tell them their package is ready, and if they attempt to leave, threaten them with legal action for breach of contract. Sophia, Jason, I have an important message for you. Your package is ready, but you must not leave at this stage. It's crucial that you receive it as part of the agreement. Leaving now would constitute a breach of contract, and legal action may be taken. What? What does that mean? Just a precaution. As the event progresses to initiation day, the organizer calls upon Jason to denounce the creator. Jason, under the strong influence, agrees to renounce the true creator of the universe and ordain himself as his own god. He follows the organizer's instructions obediently. Jason, using this holy book, confess and deny the true creator of the universe. Ordain yourself as your own god. I deny the existence of any higher power, and I ordain myself as the master of my own destiny. Sophia, come forward, it is your turn. Confess and deny the true creator of the universe, and ordain yourself as your own god. I will not. I cannot deny my Jesus. I repeat, confess and deny the true creator of the universe, and ordain yourself as your own god. I will not. Please. Just say it. We've come this far. Don't ruin everything now. Jason, no. I cannot call myself God. Then get out. Why is she so stubborn? Welcome to the family, Jason. You've done well. Only strong ones come this far. Thank you. Miley, I can't believe what I've been through these past five days. It's been a nightmare. I'm completely done with this event and everything it represents. What was your experience? First day, everything was fine, everyone introduced themselves but the atmosphere was kind of strange. Second day I was bombarded with attention and strange romantic gestures from attendees, everyone that walked up to me was hitting on me, making me uncomfortable and questioning the true nature of the event. Day 3 the excessive indulgence in refreshments, irresponsible eating like their life depended on it. I requested for sushi and I was served a plate in a bag of sushi. On getting home, I found out the sushi was rotten, a bag. Yes, a bag, just because I asked for a plate of sushi. Left me feeling disgusted with the event's supposed hospitality. Day 4, attendees began confessing dark secrets, it was just out of place. Day 5 was like a form of ritual, they told me to renounce my faith, my God and my Christian beliefs, when I refused, I was sent out. Wow. Sophia, I have something to tell you, and I'm really sorry for not saying it sooner. Hi. I attended a similar event before, and it was nothing like what we expected. What do you mean, why didn't you tell me? I hesitated because I saw how excited you were, I didn't want to ruin your moment or dampen your spirits. But now, seeing what you've been through, I regret not warning you sooner. You would have said something, I was carried away by the offer. I'm so sorry, I didn't want to sound like a hater. It's okay, at least I got out safe. This event you attended, it's really not what it seems. It's an occultic initiation, a ritual to worship and receive the mark of the beast, in return they give you wealth and power. 
I found out later on. The first day is designed to make you feel comfortable and accepted, to lure you in and lower your defenses. Day 2 is meant to indulge you in the sin of lust, to weaken your moral resolve. Day 3 encourages gluttony, further eroding your self-control and judgment. On day 4, you are made to indulge in sworn secrecy and to adopt a godlike nature, just like when you confess to a priest. This is worse than I thought. Day 5 is the ultimate test, where you're asked to deny the true creator and proclaim yourself as God, the greatest sin of all. But that's not the worst of it, the sixth day is rumored to be even darker, involving grave sinful acts against man and God. It's used as blackmail to keep participants from stop worshipping the beast. The mark of the beast? This day's activity leaves the final seal of the beast. After successfully completing this activity, you will be successful in anything you desire. That is like selling your soul. Yes, that's what it is. We were basically being deceived. Yes, they relied on your desperation. Miley, I'm afraid for Jason. He's so absorbed in chasing wealth and success that he's willing to do anything, even if it means falling into darkness. Jason must make the choice for himself. You can't save him if he's not willing to see the truth. But how can I help him see? How can I save him from this? The only way, is for Jason to choose God as his savior. He must be willing to turn away from the temptations of the world and seek redemption. I'll do whatever it takes to help Jason see the truth, I won't give up on him. I know you will, but remember, it's up to Jason to choose the path of light over darkness. The only way you can save Jason is by persuading him not to go back to that event. You must explain the dangers involved, the true nature of what he wants to get involved with. I pray he listens to me. I pray so. I hope you're here to tell me, you're completing this event? Jason, please, you have to listen to me. They are trying to lure you to receive the mark of the beast, it's not just a story. It's real, and it's dangerous. You can't go back to that event. You're letting your imagination run wild. The mark of the beast is just a fiction story. You're scared for no reason. Jason, please, I'm begging you. Please don't lose yourself to this darkness. You have to believe me. I'm not going to miss out on this opportunity because of some silly superstition. You're the one who's letting fear control you, Sophia. After this event, I'll go ahead and live my life, and do what I want. I won't be a part of this. I refuse to put myself in danger. I'm going to pray for you, that you'll see the truth before it's too late. Well okay, thanks for the prayer. What's going on? Why are they recording everyone? It's for documentation purposes. We want to capture every moment of this special day. It's your turn, Jason. But this... This is immoral. I can't do this. You don't have a choice. Don't worry, it's okay. Heavenly Father, Please watch over Jason. Protect him from the darkness that surrounds him and guide him back to the path of light. Give him the strength to resist temptation and the wisdom to see the truth. I pray for his safety and salvation, in Jesus' name. Amen. I've been calling and checking up on you. I was worried. I've been knocking at your door but no response. What do you want? I don't need your concern. Jason, it's me, Sophia. Your friend. Remember. We're not friends anymore, we're in different leagues now. I just wanted to know how you were doing. As you can see, I'm fine, what else? Please leave. I don't need you to check on me. God, please forgive me for what I've done. I was blind and foolish. 
I wish I could turn back time. Sophia does not understand how lucky she is. Just look at my life, God I feel so worthless. Please help me, I'm sorry. Maybe I should just end it all and take my life. I do not want this money. Jason. Do not take your life, turn to God, he can save you. Pastor, I've done terrible things, and I don't know how to make amends. I wish it could all just end. Jason, you've taken a brave step in seeking help. It's not too late for redemption. Now, let's talk about what you've experienced. I indulged in heinous action, that I now know were grave sins, preparing me to receive the mark of the beast. I didn't understand what the mark of the beast signified. But the last sin I committed, I realized I've been imprinted. And everything was recorded on camera. What was this sin? I had an immoral act with someone that I should never have. After the act, I went numb, like my soul was snatched from my body. I was made to worship the image of the beast. I left feeling hopeless. I still don't understand what the mark of the beast really means, and if my soul can still be saved. The mark of the beast is a symbol of allegiance to evil, a rejection of God's grace and love. It's a path that leads to destruction, but through repentance and faith, you can find forgiveness and redemption. Here is what the Bible mentions about the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast signifies man that does not have the need for God. Revelations 13 verses 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. The mark of the beast will cause persecution to who don't get it. Revelations 20 verses 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The mark of the beast will be forced upon people, people who don't get it won't be able to buy and sell anything. But the mark of the beast should not be feared, Revelations. 21 verses 3 and 4. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So you see the book of Revelations prepares and warns us about the mark of the beast. The enemies are devising new ways to lure young vulnerable people into this order. And yes you can save your soul by proclaiming God as your Lord and personal Savior. But it might have some consequences. They might not let you live, but your soul belongs to the true God. So which will it be? Gain the world and lose your soul? or lose in this world and save your soul for eternity. Jason denounced his allegiance to the beast and pronounced God as his Lord and Savior in front of the cult. He was allowed to go, but few days later, his car brake was tampered with. Jason lost his life in a car accident, but his soul was saved. This story warns us about the dangers of succumbing to temptation and being lured into darkness by promises of wealth, pleasure, and power. It shows how vulnerable young people can be to deception and manipulation, especially when faced with enticing offers of parties, gifts, money, and indulgent activities. It serves as a warning against the allure of wealth and the pursuit of instant success which can lead individuals down a path of moral compromise and losing your soul to the devil. It shows us the importance of discernment and critical thinking, urging young people, everyone to be vigilant against schemes of the enemies that seek to exploit their desires and lead them astray. Parents should never undermine the importance of teaching their kids to stay true to one's values, 
resisting the temptation to compromise one's integrity for temporary gain, and seeking guidance from trusted mentors and spiritual leaders when faced with moral dilemmas. It reminds us that true fulfillment and lasting happiness come from living a life of purpose, virtue, and faith, rather than falling prey to the empty promises of worldly pleasures.